FAXA. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union and HGEA present the Timmy Chang Show on ESPN Honolulu and KHI. Brought to you by IBEW Local 1186, Hawaii Pacific Health. Enjoy snacks, nonstop travel, St. Louis School, and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. All right. Welcome to Ruby Tuesday Moana Lua for the Timmy Chang Show, everybody. So glad to have you here at Ruby Tuesday in person. And, of course, so good to have Coach Timmy Chang. Uh, of course, he's got to be here. It's his show, so that makes a lot of sense. 808-296-1420 uh, is the number to call in or dial in. Uh, you can text us that, that number if you've got some questions for Coach. We've got a few already, but we want to get into it, Coach, first. Just your, uh, your, your quick thoughts. Before we get into the highlights, just your thoughts on uh, where you're at right now. Yeah, it's a tough week. You know, um, when, when you lose a game, uh, you got to wait a whole week to go out there and compete again. And so, um, you know, for us and for myself personally, you know, it's a long week. And, uh, you know, you start to think about the, the what ifs and what, what can we do to get better. I, I tell you what, um, for us as a team, um, you know, the things that are showing up on the film uh, definitely have to get corrected. And, and it's starting with uh, with us being back in the building, um, discipline, and, and getting getting right down to football and doing the right things. All right, let's check a, uh, take a look at some of the film. Uh, as you all know, week one matchup versus Stanford. Uh, Hawaii once again started slow on offense, going three and out on three straight incomplete passes on two straight drives. But let's take a look at the highlights. Stanford uh, posed to be a very tough opponent. Uh, ran an extended second series that took over four minutes to finish off with Emmett Smith, the fourth, running it in from a yard out. That was the score at the end of the first quarter, 7 nothing. So Hawaii not allowing them uh, any more points on that. Hawaii responded to start the second quarter. Nice drive that went 75 yards, 5 minutes and 48 seconds. Ended with Week 0 Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Week catching a 7-yard Braden Shager pass. PAT tied it up at 7. Stanford then scored on a 32-yard touchdown pass to its tight end on a flea flicker. This one had everybody fooled and added a two-yard touchdown run. A 32-yard Shipley field goal made it 21-10 at the end of the first half. Your thoughts about the first half? Yeah, you mentioned the, the, the three three and outs. You know, I thought we came out flat. Um, and, and, and that happens sometimes, you know. Um, you know, this, this Stanford week, uh, very difficult to game plan a little bit just from the sense of not knowing uh, Bobby April as a defensive coordinator, first-time defensive coordinator, and, uh, and a new coach. And so there's some what-ifs inside there. Um, you know, had to fill them out, had to see what they were doing. But at the same time, we can control what we can. And, um, you know, we could have come out a, a little bit better. You know, they did exactly what we wanted to do with the defer and kick the ball, and, and they did it to us. And so um, not, having, you know, not having that situation early on um, played, it, played into a factor and, and gave them a, a hand in the 7-0, uh, getting up on us quick. Um, you know, what's happening in college football is that these possessions are coming a lot more, um, you know, they're, 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 they're precious. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, before you could get 14 to 17 possessions a game, and now with the style of play, with not stopping the, the clock on first downs, um, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at 9 to 12 possessions across the country, which now play into factor. And so, you know, the, the efficiency level of your team has to go up tremendously. So when you talk about three and three, three out, uh, three and three outs, um, you know, as an offensive perspective, you know, we have to start fast. We have to get on the, um, we have to get on the, the offensive fast. We have to put up points fast. And, um, and, and the goal is to score every time we touch the ball. Uh, it was, we got a comment here. It says, yep, Shager is the guy. His ceiling is high. Try to make a rhyme, I think, there. But, uh, yes, I mean, Braden Shager doing his job, had a couple of drop balls. Uh, first quarter, 18 yards rushing. Braden Shager was 5 of 10, 53 yards passing. He was sacked once. In the second quarter now, you had two rushing attempts only for minus six yards. Um, six penalties, 60 yards only in the first half. And, and then Shager completed the entire first half uh, going 8 of 15, 
91 yards, one touchdown, one sack. That's 52%. Just your thoughts on how the offense was running at that point because there were a few stumbles. Yeah, early on. Um, the, the stumbles were early on. Uh, you control what you can, and, and, and that's completing the ball, and that's getting it to the right spots. That's catching the ball. That's blocking and all those things. Um, the run game didn't get off as early as we liked. Um, st- kill herself with penalties and holdings and in those drives and so those those stalled us out but um, I think the guys kind of settled down and got into a rhythm as as to after those first three drives they started to feel confident um, and, and 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 throw the ball and move the ball across the field um, and and that's what's going to happen and when, once they start gaining that confidence um, can you hear me Johnny? and seeing what they can do um, it, it's gonna it just plays into effect and then they'll start be able to move the ball all right, Coach, it says uh, this comment is you emphasize more on the transfer portal or will you emphasize more on the transfer portal moving forward or stick to high school and JC? I notice more teams are depending on portal to turn things around. Player development taking backseat to instant results. Is that uh, something you're thinking about? You know, um, that's a great question. Um, you know, really uh, you see two guys, uh, um, G.J. Keeney and um, – and also Deion Sanders really kind of just gut their team and, and really implemented on the transfer portal. Now, that is that is a way to do things. Um, you know, that's one way of doing it. I chose not to. I elected not to do that and, and, and not purge a roster, especially the way that um, guys have left and, 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 and also uh, the way and the matter that I was hired. Um, I, I didn't feel that was the best way to go about it. But as we move forward, um, it would be it's going to be a mix of – of all three, transfer, JUCO, and high school kids, especially high school kids from Hawaii, transfer transfer guys uh, that want to come and play for the University of Hawaii or want to come back home, we'll look at, and also the JUCO, the JUCO levels across the country. Uh, there is one comment here. It says, it's from earlier in the day. It says, need to play four fast receivers. Uh, put the tight end on the bench. He's not fast enough. Your thoughts on m- making Grayson Morgan part of a slot slash tight end kind of performer? Yeah, the tight end, and uh, he adds in an, he adds in value for us in the run game. And and right now, um, you know, gelling the run, gelling the O line together, gelling the tight end together with the running backs, um, you know, hasn't been the strongest point in the run game right now. But it but it'll come. It comes to repetition. We were we were really spoiled uh, last year with you know Michael Vanderpool, um, Vanderpool, um, Il Manning, and then some of the uh, older older guys that stuck around and played for play for the university and um and, and we're, we're we're really spoiled by having those guys and now you got some new guys that are coming in there some new guys that are gelling um and so it, it takes a little bit you know just like anything else but uh but i feel like it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hit here soon i kind of knew that there would be uh, a number of questions about the run game there is one here that says coach what can improve the run game uh blocking that that usually helps and uh, and also um, understanding of where to hit the holes and and really plays are um, you know if if the it, it, football is not a really complicated sport right if there's a lot of guys around the box you probably want to throw the ball and if there's a lot of guys in coverage you probably want to run the ball and so the combination of timely calls as well as putting those guys in correct positions and then you know running back and then those guys seeing the holes and and then your 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 continuity on your old line with the double teams and where they're going to and and blocking them and getting their leverage and all those things and so all those things play into effect and then and, and, and timely calls will, will definitely help the timmy chang show is streaming live right now on uh, espn honolulu's youtube facebook and twitter pages uh, again you can see the tv broadcast of this show thursday nights on k high at 6 p.m and also uh, join in, ask coach questions. We, ha- we There's a lot of questions throughout the week, and then when it comes time to ask the coach yourself, uh, it seems to go a little spar- sparingly. But 808-296-1420 is the number to text in or call in if you've got some questions, and you can also message on the apps. Uh, just your thoughts when you're walking in at half as a head coach, you're in your second year, you're down uh, 21 to 10 to Stanford, the Cardinal – uh, really seemed to be moving the football. You did some good things. What do you tell your team at halftime? Yeah, you stay the course. We make adjustments. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about the things that, um, that they're about to do to us, what they have done, what have, you know, some of the things that offensive, defense, and special teams that we, we anticipate to see in happening, um, no different than any other locker room. But, uh, 
you know, you just kind of keep those guys on track one play at a time. Uh, I think the defense, they deferred, and so the defense was up first. And uh, you tell them, you know, let's go get a stop and, and, uh, and let's get us back the ball. We got to go down there and score. And, uh, and you, start, you start with the first possession first and one play at a time. And so um, that's what it's about, man, it's just one play at a time. All right, folks, join in with me. It's time now for random questions. Okay, coach, favorite flavor of ice cream? Ice cream. Oh, Rocky Road. Rocky Road. Mm. Any particular brand? You're not sponsored by an ice cream, are you? No. No. Uh, any particular brand? Rocky Road. Is that like a, that's a, ben and, no, not Ben & Jerry. That's like Hagen, no. That's a, what is that? Oh, it's what brand? The pink one. What is it? I'm thinking. Medical? I don't know. Is that so Rocky Road? No, I, I, thought, I thought I'd choose Loco. Okay, well that, we'll go with that. Yep. Rocky Road. <laughs> Rick, what's yours? <laughs> Standing so close to the table here, uh, guarding the enjoy snacks. Which, by the way, we'll be giving out a little bit, little bit later. And uh, during the breaks, we give out some raffle prizes. But at the end, we'll put all the names back in the bucket and we'll choose. And you're going to do it again this week. Okay, sounds good. Okay, good. Uh, Jamocha Almond Fudge. What is the, the brand that I'm thinking? It's not Ben & Jerry's. It comes in the pink. Forget it. I'll get a phone call from my wife saying, <laughs> Baskin and Robbins. Ugh. All right. Okay, so 808-296-1420 is the number to text in. When we come back, we're going to be talking second half against Stanford. Before we move on to you, Albany, you are watching and listening to The Timmy Chang Show.
This is the Timmy Chang Show from Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua. Presented by ESPN Honolulu and K High. All right, everybody in, enjoying happy hour here at Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua. Of course, uh, Coach Timmy Chang can't wait for this show to be done so that he can also enjoy. Uh, but you're drinking water again. I told you that was my favorite beverage last yeah, show. Yeah, we asked him a random question, uh, and and water turned out to be your your favorite um, <laughs> your favorite beverage. It quenches the thirst. <laughs> what is going to quench the thirst of the Rainbow Warriors coming out after a 21 to 10 first half? What what quenches their thirst? What do you try to tell them? coming out how do you get them jacked up to play another two quarters yeah you know it's it's, it's one play at a time right it's it's two possessions that we're down uh it, it starts with a stop on defense and uh you go down on uh you go down on offense and you go score and, and you move the ball and, and and you just make plays that's what it really comes down to we have a theme we have a theme this year of making plays man you got to catch the ball you got to throw the ball you got to run you got to block you got to tackle you got to cover you got to kick i mean that's that's basically the game We'll get to your comments here in just a bit. We do have one uh, about Braden Shager, who, by the way, is our special guest today. He'll be joining my brother broadcast partner, Mark Veneri, uh, in just a bit. But first, uh, we want to let you know that you can call in and question in if you want, 808-296-1420. You can also hit us up where we're streaming live right now, and that's on the ESPN Honolulu YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook pages. So we'll be waiting for your, your questions here uh, so that we can ask Coach in just a bit. Let's jump into second half highlights against the Stanford Cardinal. Stanford was able to extend its lead with a pair of three uh, third-quarter field goals, both of those from 25 yards out. Now, the only point scored in the third quarter, but Hawaii struck at the start of the fourth quarter, the acrobatic 24-yard, one-foot-in grab by Stephen McBride in the end zone. That closed the gap. Hawaii was down at that point 27-16. to 16. Coach, at first, I wasn't sure that he pulled that one in. It was a perfect pass by your quarterback. It was really only put where Stephen McBride could catch it. I think that combination, uh, on top of what Pafeli has been able to do, uh, Pafeli Ashlock, that is, uh, Braden Shager's throwing perfect passes. Stephen McBride is making unbelievable catches. Yeah, that was a really good throw. Uh, that was coming out of the, the quarter and changing field positions. I believe that's only our second possession of the, of the half in um, – and, and but but Shager and 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 Steven, um, a transfer from Kansas, uh, you know he he's been a, he's been a really good um, addition to the room. Um, you know he's the veteran. He's the, he's kind of the leader, veteran type quality guy. Um, Jonah Pinocchi, who you guys haven't seen yet, should be back this week. But uh, but Steven has added in you know that 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 solid groundwork mm -hmm. on the outside that with speed and, and and able to catch the ball and and Braden uh, is, is seeming to find him two weeks in a row now. All right, let's continue on with our second half highlights against Stanford. Unfortunately, Stanford would answer right back uh, with a field goal from 46 yards, but uncharacteristic drop balls have plagued Hawaii's fourth quarter drives until really it was too late in this one. Pofeli Ashlock added a score late with a 16-yard pass from Braden Shager to make it 37-22. Then bring in your Navy transfer, Dalen Morris, for the second straight week. He punches it in for the two-point conversion. Falling short, though, Hawaii falls 37-24 to to go to 0-2 in this one. And uh, just your thoughts at the end of the game, Coach, about your second half. We'll, we'll talk a, a, about a few more things here in just a second. You had a couple of guys uh, disqualified for targeting. Uh, you had drop balls. You, you, there were six sacks in this game, uh, despite how well Braden played. Uh, just your overall thoughts on the on the game now. Yeah, yeah, you, you that's that's where you got to tighten up the screws a little bit um, and understanding where you know some of these big some of these penalties or or um, or costly mistakes are, are on third downs you had a couple of big ones sure you know um, you know protection or, or or shakes will know that you know he, he can tell you that you know we try to look for for anytime we're, we're, we're throwing the ball we're always looking we're always looking down the field but we're always looking for our quick throws as well uh, to, to make sure that we could protect the old line so you know, there's there's a combination of things that are happening um, both sides of the ball, um, and and you gotta, you know, talk about efficiency, talking about possessions and those type of things. Um, you you gotta kind of, you know, limit those. You really have to limit those. You can't have them, especially when you're gonna play a, a good team and a, and a well-coached team as as Stanford was. Braden Shager, uh, this is a 
a comment in from a, a viewer or a listener. Braden Shager, zero interceptions. See, he tried his best, has put it on himself, can do better. Uh, that is quality QB play. To do that shows that he wants to improve, and each game he plays, he will. Yeah, you know, he's, uh, he's improving. Uh, I, I think you guys seen quarterbacks in this offense improve as weeks go on, and, and, and he's no different. He's going to continue to grow in this offense and, um, and, and do some really good things. And, and I think right now he's, uh, if not one or, or the top quarterback passing yard in, in the country right now. And so uh, he'll continue to, to, to improve, and, and we need him to play at a high level. Um, for us to win these games and in this offense, he has to play at a high level. He understands that. He knows that. He's up to the challenge, and, and he wants to do those. He wants to be great. A couple of drop balls, but let's go ahead and go through some of his, uh, his statistics real quick. Shager finished 30 of 53 for 355 yards and three scores, set a career high in yards, completions, attempts, and matched a career high in touchdowns. He's the first UH quarterback to throw for over 350 yards in consecutive games since Cole McDonald did it against Oregon and or uh, excuse me Oregon State and Arizona back in 2019. It was also the most completions by a UH quarterback since 2020 when Chevin Cordero did it against New Mexico. Uh, here's one more thing. So yay on how about a hand for Braden Shager who happens to be sitting in the audience? Yes, that deserves an applause. I know that he'd probably want two wins instead of two losses and all the accolades uh but those are nice and that's uh, the sign of a quarterback coming along in an offense that has changed uh but the, here's one thing that we haven't seen that someone is asking about coach have you thought about using the shovel pass i mean gosh i don't even know how many times you've probably been asked this uh all the listener wants to know is what you think of that play because it works yeah, it's, it's again. It's a timely call, right? It's a uh, it's a call we need. You know, we need to see um, based on what a defense is uh, is doing, and um, you know, if they're if they're not doing what they're do what we want them to do, then it's not it's not as good as it works as 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 some of the other deals. And so, um, you know, it did show up in the Vanderbilt game, um, and uh, we almost went in. Uh, we ended up fumbling the ball, if you remember, on that uh, on the one yard line right there, and uh, and so. Yeah, but it's in, the, it's in the playbook for sure. Thanks. Okay, there you go. Um, with all the good things that Braden Shager was able to do, there was the downside. Uh, he, he did throw a touchdown. Th here's one good thing before we get to the downside. Shager's thrown a touchdown pass for the 11th consecutive game. But this time uh, he's now tied for, I want to say, third in the country in sacks. He was sacked six times. Um, David Bailey, number 23 for the Stanford Cardinal, coming off that end, accounted for three alone. He was a tough player to go up against. Yeah, he was good. He was a good player. Um, uh, well coached. And, um, and so, yeah, our tackles will get better, you know, as, 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 as it goes along. And, um, and, and, and sitting down in there and, 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 and really, um, and Shakes knows he's, he, can, he can help them out by, uh, by getting out the ball into, into the right spots at times and, uh, and, and, and protecting. But... At the same time, our, our tackles will get better. One thing we haven't really touched on is the run game. It's been pretty non-existent. Um, here's just a, a couple of quick stats. We're going to take a look at a couple of catches, though, by your, your backfield. Negative five yards for the entire game. Landon Sims and Tylen Hines did catch a couple of balls. Here's one of them. Braden Shager sending them in motion. Uh, again, Hines... Uh, Sims with this 22 yards, and, and, and then Hines had 28 yards, but Hines only had five yards rushing, and Solo Vipulu added four, only six rushing attempts for the entire game. Yeah, and, um, you know, we went to the run early on, and uh, it, it ended up in three and outs, and, and uh, you know, we, we, felt, we felt, and I felt, that our pass game it would, would help us and, and get the ball down the field a little bit better. Um, and so we, you know, we didn't really waste time um, to go into the pass. Um, but would, would definitely would love to see our run game uh, gel. And, and, and that was the strength of last year, right? And when we talk about last year's O-line and, and where they were, and, and now we have a new O-line. And so it, it's going to take a little bit. Um, you know, it's going to take a little bit for us to get on the same page and, and, to, and to grow together. Um, I think the negative yards come from the sacks mm -hmm. when you look at net. And so, um, you know, those all play into factor. And so... I think I think uh, uh, totally as an offense, as a collective, and for me to, to put these guys in a good position and, 
and uh, and make sure the ball's coming out and all these different things on time and then we're not holding on to the ball but also getting the run game going and calling timely plays and and and, and, and really just you know when it, when you're running the ball you need five guys six guys you know doing it consistently and and, and doing it all, all all together correctly and we're, so we're seeing some defensive highlights logan taylor led the way nine tackles uh seven of those were solo elijah palmer seven solo tackles isaiah tufanga six total before being disqualified mecky pay also disqualified so you lose tufanga for the first half of the u albany game time now for random questions regular spam musubi or teriyaki spam musubi i do like a teriyaki on the on the musubi it gives an extra kick to it and yeah. if and if you put a little furukake in there that's a ah yeah. add the furukake yeah has the has the shakers had spam musubis you guys eating spam musubis spam musubis they have <laughs> brain's shaking his head yes we'll be right back with the timmy chang show <laughs> This is the Timmy Chang Show from Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua, presented by ESPN Honolulu and K-High. That's right. Welcome back to Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua. Uh, another uh, great evening. Hawaii coming off uh, of uh, yet another loss. 0-2 now on the season, but headed into this week, it's going to be a rare uh, week where we're at home for two straight games. And Hawaii is going to be taking on U Albany. We do want to, before we get into the highlights, 
We want to tell you that Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is your one-stop community credit union for all your money needs for life. Open your account today. And we also want to tell you that we'll be giving away a nice big basket from Enjoy Snacks, which, by the way, they've also put nice snacks on your table. So how about a big hand for Enjoy Snacks, our friends there? Okay. This week, Hawaii stays at home and faces FCS opponent U Albany. The Albany Great Danes, uh, in their win against Fordham, had a team record 10 sacks. 10 sacks in one game. And 11 different receivers caught at least one ball. The sophomore quarterback, Reese Poffenbarger, was 23 of 40 for four touchdowns. Coach, uh, you got yourself, uh, your hands full against a quarterback that can run and throw, it seems. Yeah, he's... Um He's uh, really good. Um, he throws the ball down the field. He moves around pretty well. Uh, had a big yard gain, um, gainage, as you guys can see in the highlights, against Fordham and, as, and against Marshall. And so, um, you know, he's got some receivers he's going to throw to. Uh, O-line's really good. The offense scheme is pretty good. Uh, okay, so you mentioned Marshall. Of course, this is against uh, Fordham. They got the win there. We're going to have some Marshall highlights here. They took on Marshall, and it was a really close game against Marshall, losing 21-17. to And then that game, Poffenbarger ran on fourth and one. We'll see that in just a minute, but his arm is surprising everybody. But on fourth and one, he surprised the entire crowd with a 54-yard touchdown run. Through two games now, he's 45 of 78 passing. That's 57.69% for 447 yards and five touchdowns and clearly they have some athletes uh if you can hold marshall scoreless for an entire first half and then hold them down like that this is an fcs opponent you can't take lightly no we had saturday off and so i was able to watch the game and and they played a great game you know i I felt like you know they um you know going into the half i think it was three zero uh with them as in, in the lead um you know marshall um you maybe shot themselves in the foot. They had a touchdown called back on the first play of the game. Um, their drives kind of stalled out. And so, um, you know, this is a tough team. I mean, they played really well. Uh, the quarterback can, can make the throws. Is You know, what I like about him is that he throws. He, he can throw the ball in the move. He can throw the ball in the pocket. He's got some really good receivers. And so, and, and defensively, as you said, they had eight sacks against a, a four. And anytime you have eight sacks, um, you're causing some disruption back there. And so, um, you know, we do have our hands full. And, um, and it, it'll be a good game. Okay, we've got a couple of questions. It seemed at times you were upset with Shager uh, while he was walking off the field. Is he holding the ball too long, not reading the defense quick enough, no pressure since his family's sitting right in front of us? No, you know, it's, it's his feet. You know, I always get on him about his feet and his rhythm. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's qualities in the, of a quarterback that uh, if you guys, you know, you guys are, you guys are great fans and smart fans. Um, you guys ask great questions. You guys are very knowledgeable about the game, especially our run and shoot offense. But in the quarterback position, um, the, the feet have to be in, 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 ring, in, in, in rhythm and in sync. And, um, and, and when, when, his are, when his are not, you know, I'm quick to remind him that that's where his, his base is and that's where you know, he's going to get his accuracy and, 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 and the timing and all the things that we need him to be. And so, um, you know, it's, it's reminders. But, but here's the thing about, here's the thing about what, what a lot of the fan base and a lot of the people don't know and play the position, right? You're asking, you're asking this quarterback to stand down the barrel while, you know, 300 and 200-pound 6'4 guys, you know, are, are moving violently around him. And he's got to go find these receivers and stay in there and hang in there and, and, and do it for the guy next to him and do it for the team for us to win games. And so that, that's the tough part about the job is that, you know, there's, these things are happening around you. you got to stay cool. you got to stay calm. Your feet's got to be in rhythm. Your eyes got to be in sync with it. And, uh, and you got to pull the trigger and make, these, and make these decisions for us to win. And, um, and that's what we're asking Chegger to do. And so he's growing into it. He's understanding it. Yep, I am. Um, but... but you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we, he's going to continue to grow and, and understand it. And, um, and, and, and really, you know, when we watch the great ones like, 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 like um, Cole Brennan, you know, he had that rhythm. He had that sync. If you guys can recall, you know, from 2005 to 2007, you know, he, he just, you know, we keep talking about those things. And, uh, and, and he's going to get it. Okay. That's great. Um, we do know that uh, UAlbany is in town. But for the first time in 10 years, Greg uh, Gattuso, their head coach, is sick. He did not make the trip. So for the first time in 10 years, he's missing a game. 
but the team actually practiced on your field today. Yeah, I, I'm. I, you know, I'm. I'm you know, I, I, I haven't reached out yet, but uh, but soon will. Um, you know, anytime, anytime you don't you don't make the trip with your team, um, you know, you you're, you're not in. It, that's the, that's the one thing that we want to do as coaches and as as players is like we want to be a part of our team, especially, you know, you, that's your team, and then and, and that's and, and this is a Hawaii trip that you know you're gonna, you know, you and your team are gonna grow from and enjoy together and build some bonds and some relationships, and so, for him to not be here really says something, and so uh, you know our prayers go out to him. Their offensive coordinator will take over the helm. Uh, he'll lead the team against Hawaii on on Saturday, 6 p.m. kickoff. Another question: uh, We do know that they're uh, you're. You're now down uh, because Landon Sims is likely not going to be playing this week. Uh, of course, we don't talk about injuries, but we do have a question. Is there any running back like a West Kili'ikipi type on the roster to run, but also to help block? I mean, I guess you have Solo, right? Yeah, Solo would be it, for sure. Um, okay, so now we're looking at uh, Tylen and Solo in the backfield. Do you get any of your other running backs back? Um. Yeah, that's 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 to be seen. Okay, that's a clever way of not answering a question with an answer. I like that. He's so good at this, especially because the opponent is in town. Okay, uh, why don't you blitz more? Because every time you give a quarterback time, you have no chance. Uh, says one of our texters. Yeah, this, it, it's a timely thing. Um, depending on what type of blitz, right? There's there's different type of blitzes where you 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 don't you don't have a safety back there and that'd be considered a zero blitz or you know there's simulated pressures where you're just bringing four or five off and depending on what direction you're coming and so it it, it really just all depends here's another question uh your thoughts real quick on the targeting penalties i know you don't like talking about referees and what they call but it is a rule now by the way targeting is when you use the crown of your helmet the rule has changed uh, before it used to be the entire side of your helmet, including the face mask. Now it's the top of the helmet and six inches around. So anytime you use any part of that helmet, when you're launching into another player, hitting another player with that part of your helmet, you're gone. You have two players out. For sure. Um, it, it, it just takes a discipline. You can't launch on guys. Um, you can't put that part of the helmet down on guys. All these, all these things go, go to a review. Whether um, you know it's a change of possession, it's a touchdown, um, and and or, or targeting penalty, um, these all go to review. Um, we have to have the discipline to just to hit guys correctly. Don't leave our feet. Um, you know, there's defenseless um, receivers or ball carriers in different positions, and so we got to be mindful of where we strike them and how we strike them. Um, and that's just part of the game, right? The game the game has changed. Uh, to, to protect players, and, and we got to understand that. So Isaiah Tufanga is out for the first half, right? I believe so. Mekki Pei? No, he, I think, he, I think he's his, available because it he's happened available. in the first half. So he is available for yep. the entire game against U Albany. 808 296 1420 is the number to dial in or give us a call. Uh, we want you to ask questions. Coming up next, my brother broadcast partner, Mark Veneri, will be along with our very special guest and the nation's leading quarterback, Braden Shager, in just a minute. But first, We've got random questions. Coach, before we go to break, cat or dog? Oh, that's a bad one because no, it's you, a good one. you can't win with you the gotta, question No, like that. cat or dog, you gotta, you got to do it. I'm, I am allergic to cats, and so i got to say dog. Okay, that's a great way of getting away from the cat argument and going straight to the dog. But that's not, that doesn't mean I haven't lived with a cat because my, my wife, when we lived in Canada together, had a cat. And she knew I was allergic, but she just kind of. That's a good way to get somebody out of the house. I know. She, I, I would break out all the time. She didn't but care. But now you're married and you have 30 kids, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. So he's going, he's going with dog. dog. And all you cat lovers, don't be mad because he tried. All right, we'll be back with our special guest and Mark Veneri when the Timmy Chang Show continues.
This is the Timmy Chang Show from Ruby Tuesday, Moana Lua, presented by ESPN Honolulu and K High. Welcome back to the Timmy Chang Show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Ruby Tuesday. And I'm really happy to announce that we have a special guest coming up in just a minute. If you've just joined us, uh, Braden Shager will be joining us in just a minute. Now, I want to tell you about him. Braden Shager leads the nation in passing with 706 yards. He is first college football in passing attempts with 88 and uh, he's first with completions with 57, third in the nation with six touchdown passes. And Hawaii quarterback Braden Shager has for the second straight week thrown for career highs. Here is ESPN color analyst and my brother broadcast partner, Mark Veneri, with the Hawaii quarterback. Thank you, John. I'm here with uh, Braden Shager. I, I got to say this first because no one really knows this, by the way. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you, Braden. Nobody knows this, but he knows this. He's the only one who knows this, that I go up to him before every game and I say, what, are we getting 300 tonight? <laughs> and it just becomes regular now that you're just throwing for 300. I hope we can keep it that way. Yeah, last year we didn't, we didn't get a lot of that. <laughs> but nobody knew that. So right before the game, I give him a fist bump. He's in the zone. I'm, I hope that's okay with Coach Timmy. But I, I go up to Brady and I say, hey, Brady, we need 300 tonight. You got me? And he's like, I got you. I probably owe him a couple dinners, too, <laughs> for all of this, too. But um, leading the nation in passing, uh, I mean, just having that or, uh, like, hearing that, how does that make you feel? Uh, it, it's cool to hear, but uh, I think it's just a testament to our whole offense. Um, done a really good job. They've done a great job blocking for me. Um, coaches have installed this offense really well, and I've just got receivers making plays for me right now. So hopefully we can keep this up. Keeping a, a, Speaking of guys making plays, uh, McBride, uh, one of them who's just been outstanding. He made a couple of great plays against Vanderbilt. Uh, also this week that toe-tap touchdown that we talked about. Talk about his development and having a leadership uh, type of role being a transfer from Kansas. Yeah, he's an older guy. Um, came in right away this offseason, and everyone just kind of saw right away that he wanted to work. Um, does a really good job. He's always asking me questions. We've got a good relationship, um, and he's just – He's done a really good job of just making plays, and um, I hope he – I know he's going to keep that up for me. Speaking of working, you know, the run and shoot is a lot of work. And you had the opportunity as a, you know, a player-led uh, workouts, uh, getting the offense down from Coach Timmy. Uh, what's it been like in the development for the run and shoot? What have you learned, and uh, what do you continue to learn with this offense? Yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress every day. You know, you, you learn something new every single week. Um, we're reading coverage on the fly, so it's uh, it's it's new every week. We gotta we gotta know what coverages they're gonna present, what what coverages the defense are gonna do. So uh, I think I'm I'm still young in the offense, still learning a lot. So it's great hearing from Coach Chang every day and just learning something new. And speaking of Coach Timmy, as you know, and we talked about this last week with uh, your receivers coach, uh, Coach Jared Arsua. Um, what's it been like learning the offense through a guy who's thrown for 17,000 yards, who's known the offense, a quarterback himself? Um, what's it been like uh, learning that and having the, uh, to pick his brain in terms of this offense? It's awesome. It's a, it's a great situation for me, uh, learning from a guy who, who did it at the highest level, um, threw for a ton of yards. So I, I just love picking his brain and just asking him questions about it. So it's a great person to learn from. Speaking of uh, a guy who's been really developing in the office, like, offense like yourself, uh, Pofeli Ashlock, who – has uh, the second, in, uh, second consecutive week of 100 yards, another freshman of the week honors in the Mountain West Conference. Uh, this guy just continues to show off with big plays. Uh, you've kind of had a little special connection with him in the last uh, two games, and it's been incredible to watch. What's it like been working with him? Uh, it's awesome. He, he comes from uh, close to Dallas, where I'm from, so uh, we've always had a good connection since he's been here, but he's really came along. He's worked really hard um, since he's been here. You know, stayed here in the summer and worked real hard. And uh, he's really came along and, and been sort of a surprise, but we kind of knew this offseason going in that he was going to do some special things. So it's fun to watch him play. Okay, I got I to gotta ask this one. Uh, your parents are here. Um, do you like Texas or do you like Hawaii better? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to say Hawaii on here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think both places are great, but it's been it's been incredible being here. Um, I love everything about Hawaii. It's, it's a really special place. Um, it was a little bit of a culture shock at first, but – I love it here. The people are great, and just uh, this state is really uh, taking me in. So always thank for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on if you can real quickly. What is Braden Shager's goal for the program? You know, this year, maybe even next year. We're assuming you're staying here, of course. Absolutely. Uh, he's staying. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> we know that with the Shager bombs, whatnot. But what is the goal for 
this University of Hawaii program, what would you like to leave it when you do as a senior? Uh, where would you like to see that pro uh, this program? Uh, I think a big thing for me is just leaving it better than I found it. You know, that's a big part of it is just trying to turn this place back to where it was when Coach Chang and, uh, and Colt Brennan were playing. Um, I think we got a lot of team goals. We, we still, I mean, I think that we got a – we got a chance to do something special in the Mountain West, and um, so we got a lot of goals within the team, and uh, we just got to keep working every day and, and, and trying to achieve those. Should we just start it now and say 300 uh, against U of Albany? <laughs> I we'll hope start so. start it right now, right? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> 300 yards. You guys heard it here. Braden Shager, appreciate your time. Best of luck uh, to you this season and continued success for this program. Uh, Braden Shager, everybody, uh, really appreciate his time coming in. Uh, you're watching the Timmy, uh, the Timmy Chang Show on ESPN Honolulu. This is the Timmy Chang Show from Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua, presented by ESPN Honolulu and K High. All right, uh, fourth quarter here at Ruby Tuesday, Moanalua. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and to everybody that's called in, uh, we do have a few more uh, questions. Last year, Coach, you had one game which fans could meet the players after the game. I, I know this is senior night. Will you do it again? 100%. Yeah. 100%. The fans are everything, man. Yeah. You know, you fans, you know, you guys are listening, you guys are watching. I mean, you recruit our kids. You make them feel at home. They come from different parts of the world, different parts of our country, different parts of the island. Um, and any, time of war any type of warmth, you know, any type of joy, aloha that you bring to them in our, in our culture and our aloha spirit, um, it, it is. It goes a long way, and and that's why they come here and they, they play for the state. And so, um, very thank you know anything we can do to give back to the community and all the things that we can give back to our fans. Uh, that's what's about. Did you know it was run and shoot night Saturday? 
Was it? Bryant Moniz will be there. Chad Owens will be there. Greg Salas will be there. So if you want to take pictures, those those are some legends that will uh, be at, at the game this this uh, this Saturday. Uh, and there you go. You see it on the bottom of your screen. Okay, let's ask another question. Um, how is Braden? We should have probably asked this, but I have the uh, the text messages. How is Braden Shager's eye? I know he got eye. he got it stuck pretty good at, during the game. Yeah, for sure. Clearly, um, he looked all right when he was up here just moments ago. Yeah, he. Uh, you know, I asked him the same thing too when uh when that face mask penalty came in, and um and so we had to get him a towel. But uh, I think he's doing well. Um, he takes care of his body. I mean, he, the kid's eating a salmon and a salad. I don't think. At 21 years old, I was eating a salmon and a salad, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question before I, I lose it. Uh, Papunu, why wasn't he spoken of in the depth chart? Just so I, I'm looking at the question, I'm reading it as I'm, uh, as I'm looking at it. Uh, he did start. He did start this week. He did start, and he, he's, a, he's a great player. I mean, if I could sit up here and, and have a show for five hours and talk to you about every single kid, um, you know, it, it would take it would take a long time. And, and to be honest with you, he's he's such a great story. Carson is such a great story um, from Maui. Um, did you know? Did with along with a, a lot of other um, families and, and friends uh, has lost loved ones. And so, um, but but he's such a great kid. He um, he add val he adds value to our team um, in a lot of different ways. And he got the start um, into an unknown opponent. Um, and so he, we knew that we could trust him to do his job, and he and he did a great job. I'm a, um, he caught a, he caught a ball that uh, that you know um, Stephen slipped on, and it was a big gain. And ended up giving us a field goal at the end of the half. Okay, uh, another question. Let's talk about Dalen Morris. Number one, from your observation, is Dalen Morris a good passer? Number two, do you plan to have Dalen Morris as a guest on the Call the Coach show or the Timmy Chang show in this case? Uh, in the future, maybe before the Air Force game. Yeah, sure. We'll bring him. What, before, what do you think we'll, of him? We'll, we'll bring him before the Air Force game. Oh, uh, great young man. Uh, is planning. Um, wants to go. He wants to become a JAG. He wants to become an, a, an attorney at law in the in the in the military. And and so um, he's working full time as well as playing football full time and doing and doing the student athlete. He has an obligation to to our state. I um, mean, to our government. Um, and he does that. I mean, he he dresses, comes in. 7 o'clock practice, you know, he's in there as a professional, 6.15, 6 o'clock in the morning. You know, he's part of one of the guys, and he leaves in his fatigues to go to, to do what he needs to do for our country. And uh, um, I told him what his role was going to be, you know, and, and, you know, he can throw. You know, when, when, when I knew he came from Kenny Neal Matalolo's uh, um, background in Navy, and I, I understood what he could do and what value he brings. He wanted to play quarterback. He tried out. And, uh, and so he's going to continue that value. Um, and uh, he can throw. He practices at quarterback with us. Um, and, and does those things, probably that running back too. But um, again, he's just a, he's a guy that we, we're, we're relying on in, 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 in very crucial situations. Let me ask you about this. I thought it was pretty awesome. And for the home opener, your entrance to the field was pretty good fun. That was really awesome. It, was, it brought it back to like the Vili days when the drums were playing and Vili was on the field. This guy is a really good hype man. Yeah, no doubt. Um, that's, that's a that's a, form, that's a former UH alumni warrior and, and, and Tiati Productions with uh, Afa Tia Thompson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just it's a why, man. It's, it's, it's a call away, right? And you got your brother, you got your auntie, you got your uncle, you got your friends right here by your side. And, and he's no different. I mean, he, he brought his production. Uh, they were beating the drums. Um, you, saw, you saw the whole the thing, the warrior in fashion, and I thought it was really good. I thought our, I thought our UH athletic department did an unbelievable job. I thought the environment was electric, you know. Um, I thought it was too electric for my, my team. Uh, <laughs> I thought my team, you know, they, 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 you know, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were pleased. My team was very yeah. pleased. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, we got, we're the entertainment and, and we got to go entertain and go do our jobs and make plays. Yeah, when you have an entrance like that, you got to make sure that you perform on the field. That's for sure. For uh, sure. Real quick, wanted to ask you, we don't have to talk about injuries. Cam Stone, uh, will he be ready? Uh, because he did play very well again. He's one of your return guys, but he did leave the field in what looked to be dramatic fashion uh, because it looked like he really did suffer a pretty big injury. Yeah, Cam Stone, um, you know, he's coming along, and uh, we'll see. It's a game-time decision. Okay, Coach, uh, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Time now for our Enjoy Snacks giveaway. We got this big basket. Cheehoo! 
All right, digging in for a name, everybody's name, even if you won something earlier, it gets put back into the, into the bucket, and now we have it. You're going to give it to me to read it. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, red Yano. Red? Is it red? Yeah, red. Woo! -hoo! We have this basket for you from our good friends at Enjoy Snacks. Uh, that is um, Red Yano. You don't you don't have you don't have to come up. Is it Rod? Rod? Rod. Okay, good. Rod. I should have known that, but Red sounded cool. Hey, um, we are off next week. Uh, not f from football, but. From the coaches show, uh, the Timmy Chang show will will come back again before we play New Mexico State. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Coach. We really appreciate everybody joining us. We'll see you again before New Mexico State. Um, it's been a lot of fun, Coach. Good luck against you, Albany, and uh, we hope you bring home the win. And then head out on to the road against Oregon, and we'll see everybody after that game. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to Rick. Have a great night, everybody. Get home safe. Don't forget, the television broadcast of this show will be on K-High Thursday at 6 p.m. <laughs>